This episode of Therapist Connect podcast is sponsored by Web Healer, the number one website provider for private practice therapists. Serving the community for 20 years, Web Healer offers a non technical and fully supported online platform helping therapists use the internet to grow their practice. Whether you need a website, a booking system, or even a secure email address for your practice, Web Healer can help. Contact Web Healer today via www.webhealer.net and use the coupon. Therapists Connect for £100 off their Do It For Me service. Welcome to the Therapist Connect podcast, a podcast for therapists by therapists. Okay, hello everybody and welcome to Series 3 of the Therapist Connect podcast. My name is Dr. Peter Blundell, and I'm here with our Therapist Connect co-lead, Kaz Binstead. Hello, Hi, Kaz. everyone. Hello. Uh, good to, yeah, good to be back here again on um, Therapist Connect podcast, which is kind of your baby, Peter. Um, but <laughs> yeah, we, we last had a chat, um, must have been, well, it was almost over a year ago, yeah. I suppose. It was at the start of the first series of the podcast and um yeah we we well I was interviewing you wasn't I about your life and your your work as a therapist yeah. um which seems like such a long time ago now so much has happened with Therapist Connect since then um it's quite unbelievable really absolutely with with Therapist Connect with life in general just yeah. <laughs> a lot going on but I mean yeah Therapist Connect over that time has um yeah, just obviously really, really grown. And um, um, I suppose it's taken you and I a little bit. Um, it's, it's been a bit of a surprise for us, for us both. And of course, at that time, I was, um, I was, because uh, I come on board and Trainee Talk was our first project, Therapist Connect first project. So that was my kind of main focus at that point. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's nice to, um, nice to be here with a community of, I think we've got, We've got over over nine thousand followers now on Twitter and about four and a half thousand on Instagram, um, which is great and worldwide as well. It's absolutely amazing. We've got a fantastic group of volunteers now who help us kind of man the social media accounts, um, and it's yeah, it's just kind of gone from strength to strength. Um, I suppose um, we could tell people a little bit why we're why we've decided to record this particular podcast at this at this particular time um so we have coming up uh on the got the dates right the 6th and the 7th of november we've got a private practice event coming up on the 6th and the 7th of november which is a worldwide event um and this is an idea that Kaz came up with actually quite a while ago um and it's just just coming to fruition now um and so we thought we'd do a little discussion today about about that event um and talk a little bit about where that idea came from and what we're trying to achieve with it just so people could get a bit of a sense of what that's going to be like mm, yeah yeah definitely it's really it's really great to have those have those dates in um, um coming up quite soon um and uh yeah we are hosting this with um our friends at online events as well um which is good because it's it's nice to have maybe a bit more solid technology. <laughs> um, um, people who know me know technology is not really my my thing. Um, um, I like I like talking on screen, but I like to just rock up and not have to worry about that stuff. Well, you say that, but I'm the one that's been missing in action at some of our some of our online events because <laughs> of technology this end. So actually. <laughs> I think uh, I think you might have it down better than me actually. <laughs> um um yeah so this this event actually feels um really really important um and the reason why we wanted to do it um and it I felt so strongly about it um was uh, well I'm a I'm a private practitioner we we both are um um but I um I guess that's my like main focus um and I'm running a, a a full private practice um and I have been for many many years and so I've had first-hand experience of um um what it's been like really being immersed in um the world of private practice um during this uh this this pandemic time um and also um being um someone who who really um works in this area um 
I, I guess I know a lot about this area in terms of um, I've I've in the past um, run workshops, setting up private practice. Um, I have done a lot of work at the BACP, um, being instrumental in um, the creation of the um, BACP private practice toolkit. Um, and also within my role as um, Therapist Connect co-lead, um, um, yeah, yeah, just hearing from private practitioners um, um, about what this, I, I guess, what this time has been like for people um, and about the, you know, the, the, the unique sector that we are actually, um, um, and, you know, just, I guess, paying a little bit of attention to that. Um, so, yeah, so the, the title of the conference, of the conference, well, we saying, saying conference, but it's not really a conference. It's, it's an, it's an event. It's a two day event. Um, um, I think, I think it's because it's over <laughs> two days, you know, so it's, it's, I think that's why we keep referring to the word conference, but it is, it actually is more, and we'll talk about this a bit more maybe, but it more is a selection of different events over the two days, um, all around private practice, um, yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, it's it's really um, probably going to be much more of um, uh, I don't know if experiential is the right word, but interactive. it's interactive. Interactive. It's like it's very much well. Uh, those of you who know therapists connect. We're very much about on the ground therapists. You know, um, less interested in kind of um, you know people saying how it is or how it theoretically is and and, and all of that we're, we're very very interested in hearing from people um you know their experiences um and whether that's people working in private practice or people who kind of um work with others um to um develop and maintain their private practices um so this event is um called private practice um 2021 um, surviving and thriving in uncertain times. Okay, so um, the title gives a little bit of a clue really there um, as to what we're going to be focusing on because um, we, we're all human beings and uh, we've all had to um, deal with all the difficulties of the pandemic um, over, this, over this period. Um, and we have been continuing to work as therapists, a lot of us, um, and continuing just day by day, just carrying on, you know. Um, and I think that um, private practice holds a lot of the um, mental health crisis. Um, certainly, in my view, mental health crisis before the pandemic there's going to be I think um, an absolute uh, peak in that um, we're already seeing it in private practice um, a lot of people's practices are full there's a lot of referrals that are coming through uh, there were figures released around um, the last week around um, the impact on young people as well um, so and you know um, again this is not really something, uh, a space for, for debating uh, uh, around um, mental health provision or, um, you know, um, um, jobs for therapists. But I think that I'll say two things that I really believe to be true and that I've spoken about a lot in my career, which, which is, um, you know, there, there's, there's, there's not the jobs out there in our profession, um, paid, paid jobs for therapists. And a lot of that is because there's not money that's put into mental health. Um, and so a lot of people end up going into private practice um, and private practice is really seeing that, you know, people people clearly need mental health services because otherwise our practices wouldn't be being overrun. Um, so in short, we have been holding a lot. Um, and, and of course, you know, we uh, we sit with um, clients and sometimes when we're sitting with clients, um, we might know they might say something we might know. Oh, I've got experience with that or whatever, but they don't know that we do. Whereas in this situation as well, uh, we've had to adapt because everyone is just uh, it's just one of those things in the room that, that both people in the room are, have also been experiencing a pandemic. 
um, and all the kind of intricacies that that come off that as well. So um, yeah, I think uh, I've probably just rambled there, but it, it's there's a lot basically. <laughs> Uh, but I think what you were talking about there, Kaz, is kind of some of the rationale and the reasoning why we thought something. Well, I say we actually, it was your idea uh, to to do this event over the over the two days. Um, and like with all the Therapist Connect events, I mean, obviously the, the clue is in, in our name. We want to bring as many kind of therapists together from lots of different backgrounds and perspectives to try and discuss how people have managed to survive in their private practice over um, the pandemic and beyond, um, and also what people are doing to help their practices thrive. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think really appreciate the amount of work that Kaz has put into this conference who really bring together as many different kind of therapists as possible to contribute to those events. Um, and I think it um, depends whether we've got the lineup announced at, at, at this point when the podcast comes out, but um, we've got we've got a very, very diverse range of, of, of therapists who, who have uh, agreed to contribute and bring some of their experiences from all different parts of the world um to to talk about what it's like been like to work in private practice and and the tips and guidance maybe that people can give um that we might be able to share with each other yeah absolutely yeah it's been um yeah it's been really great um and you know it, it really shows actually i think what what a community can produce maybe when we all come together um you know to just actually just go well, I mean, certainly in the Therapist Connect community, a huge proportion of the community will be private practitioners. And of course, one of our missions um, at Therapist Connect is to um, really help try to help reduce the isolation uh, for people in private practice that was there anyway, but again, may have been heightened um, during lockdown periods and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, for people to, we're so, you know, we're so grateful for um, people within the community who um, share our vision and, um, you know, kind of step, yes, step forward and say, yeah, you know what, I'm going to be part of this. Um, I'm really, really looking forward to um, hearing from some people. Um, we're going to have all kinds of different discussions. Um, and as Peter's already said there, so many, a diverse range of, of people um hearing from so many people and of course we also want to hear from um from from you guys any attendees you know we, we want people to feel like they can they can have a say they can um you know to have a space to reflect on their own experiences um certainly be the um the use of the the chat box we'll hopefully have some people popping up on screen um if people want to um and we've also got a couple of um spaces um for for just yeah yeah just for everyone who's actually watching um um kind of type I, I don't know you, you you might call them like networking I suppose I'm not I'm not I'm not a huge fan of that word um because it, it brings up connotations for some people about what that actually means but I think it's very much about just being able to say here I am I'm a private practitioner this is how I found things, or this is, you know, this is my practice. This is how I work. This is what I work with. Um, and just being able to meet with other people um, in however you are as a person, we're all different as people. I think that's one of the great things I like that about um, when we think about referrals in private practice. Um, when I meet a person, I don't want everyone to be like cardboard cutout kind of kind of therapists. And I work with this and I work with that. And it just to be about that. I want to meet a person and say, oh, that person who came across like this. Um, so there's a real like, I don't know, I, I like that, that kind of authenticity um, in practice. I think I think it's really difficult. I mean, we've spoken about this a lot in all the different broadcasts and writing that we've done that actually being in private practice uh i suppose wherever you are in the world actually can be a really lonely experience um if you're not connected to other other therapists um then it, it yeah it can be quite lonely and um where do you have those discussions um and i think then during the pandemic as well where all of a sudden all therapists were working from home if they decided to work online it added that extra element of isolation for people so i think 
those spaces and I hopefully if people have been to one of any of our other events our support groups our book groups our other other um workshops that we've done they'll know that what we try and create is a safe space for people to kind of talk about what is meaningful for them and I think particularly bringing therapists together around private practice I think we could really offer a really nice space for people to kind of share those experiences and get tips and advice and think about how different people have have done different things and I know um the therapist connect community is so generous anyway I think on social media I think I think there'll be people will be be able to share those tips and those um and those things in in those spaces and I think the other thing I just wanted to mention was we've had quite a a few students when we announced we were doing um, this event we had quite a few students commenting saying oh I'll 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 attend this in future years and once I'm once I'm qualified and I've I've, you know I've been in practice and but we just as with all of the Therapist Connect events we encourage any students if you're interested come along you know um, and hear how uh, people are working in private practice even if you're not ready to set up in private practice yet um, it's really nice just to hear other people's experiences and to hear what is possible um, and what you can potentially do if you want to set up in private practice. And just go back to Kaz's point, there is a very diverse range of people in private practice. You know, there's therapists working in lots of different ways. So it might be it might be nice as a student to hear some of those experiences and see what might be possible as a private practitioner. Yeah, really. I mean, yeah, I I want to pick up on two points, actually, that you're saying there, Pete. Um, That first point about students, please do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, You know, we we love working with students anyway. Um, um, And uh, yeah, um, a lot of a lot of my interests in private practice have been kind of trying to encourage students who are thinking about going into private practice to prepare you know, this is a big part of it. So, you know, often when you're studying, um, courses uh, differ on this, but um, there's often not a lot of, um, uh, they often don't go too much into depth on working in private practice. And it is a very niche area, actually. Um, and some courses don't pick up on it at all. Um, so I know that a lot of the work I've been involved in has been trying to um close that gap a little bit to help support people a bit better who are thinking about going into private practice but you know this could be part of um, preparation if you really are thinking about it Um, so yeah absolutely do come along Um, and I think the other thing that you said there Pete um, about about isolation um, and uh, when I when I started to talk to people about um, potentially taking part in some of these discussions I I felt relieved I was kind of like and here I am you know I'm I'm co-lead at a very large community therapy community and yet I could still feel that that real sense of isolation actually because when I was sitting down talking um with with some people and even some friends who who I know um but we were just kind of saying well, see, what's been the experiences of the pandemic and stuff like that um yeah I, it just felt like oh oh, that resonates and that resonates. And, oh, it's not only been me who's felt that, um, which I, yeah, and I just came away thinking, oh, goodness, that's invaluable. If I was feeling that. Um, I really, yeah, I really, really hope that this is going to be, this is going to be of some some use to people. Um, we've got a variety of, of different um, events, um, as Peter was saying there. So, yeah, it's two days, which is a long time. Um, but, you know, it's pay what you can. So um, could be great value. Um, we hope that people do kind of stay around and, and try and do as much of it as they as as they can. Um, but also there is obviously the option to dip in and out depending on your uh, yeah your schedule. And we know loads of people, obviously, you, people have been locked in for a long time. So I'm sure people want to get out and about on weekends. But, you know, um, um, yeah, have a look, see what you might want to come along to. And if you can come for the whole two days, you know, I think just that being as a group together, it, that that might really be. Yeah, that could really be something, actually. Um, we'll have a couple of um, a couple of 
uh, kind of keynote speakers, um, one of which is me. Um, I'm talking about some of my work and um, yeah, and and obviously just about the conference itself. And we're going to have a couple of interviews as well. Um, so there's real range actually of things that are going on. We've got some um, quite a few debates, haven't we? And panel discussions. Um, and we've also got a section on integrating research into private practice as well. Um, so as Kaz said, I mean, we, we, we've we covered pretty much every every type of possible event that you could have, I think, around private practice. And we also know that everyone takes in information and stuff in different ways. So we tried to want to kind of have that variety, really, so people could um, yeah, experience different things throughout the day um, and listen to, to, to different voices, really. So we're really excited. Um, yeah. And it's um, hopefully it'll all it'll all go swimmingly. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, I'm I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, and I hope that it can just be, um, I guess, a, 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 as much of a we we talk about safe spaces here at Therapist Connect. Now, something that we are are discussing a lot. You know, how do you get safe spaces? Can anything ever be entirely safe? All of that kind of thing. Um, but we certainly have an intention to try to create safe spaces. So. So, yeah, in within all the discussions and all the facilitation that, that we're doing um, on this two day event. Um, yeah, we, we, we hope that people can feel can feel safe, can feel part of a community um, and, yeah, just come along. And really, uh, I guess it's a chance to really embody uh, just be completely be with yourself and, yeah, re reflect, process what has this time been like for me? I was just going to say also, it's called Surviving and Thriving. And um, we have had to carry on. We run businesses as private practitioners. We run businesses. So there's all of that stuff. But then there's also, I need to maintain my business. And or, and this is something we will be touching on, new private practitioners who started during the pandemic time. Mm. So interested in all of that as well. There's a lot of topics to cover, and I think just talking about that idea of processing things, and I think being able to do that in a in a community or sharing it with other people, I think well, it's important for me and something I valued as part of the Therapist Connect community. So we're hope hoping that we're going to bring all of that um, all of that sense of community to to this particular event. Just if people are interested um, and they want to book on, if you're on um, Twitter, it's our currently our pinned tweet. So you can go on there and the link is attached to that. Um, but we'll also put the Eventbrite link um, in the links to this podcast as well. So people can go there um, or you can look on our website and the link to book will be on there as well. OK, um, well, it's always lovely chatting, Peter um and uh yeah yeah thanks, thanks Paz um I'm looking forward to hearing your keynote at the at the event <laughs> yeah I'd, I'd better I'd better start writing it <laughs> um, um yeah really look forward to seeing people um yeah thank you all the best thanks very much everyone and I'll see you soon this episode of Therapist Connect podcast is sponsored by Web Healer, the number one website provider for private practice therapists. Serving the community for 20 years, Web Healer offers a non-technical and fully supported online platform helping therapists use the internet to grow their practice. Whether you need a website, a booking system, or even a secure email address for your practice, Web Healer can help. Contact Web Healer today via www.webhealer.net and use the coupon Therapists Connect for £100 off their Do It For Me service. Thank you for listening to the Therapist Connect podcast. Go to www.therapist-connect.com for more discussions and debates.